Welcome once again. Nigeria's former Deputy Senate President, Senator Ike Ekwaramadu, and his wife Beatrice have pleaded not guilty to the charges of human trafficking and organ harvesting in the United Kingdom. The couple, who were arrested by the British police on July 23rd on allegations of human trafficking and organ harvesting that violate the country's modern slavery act, have pleaded, uh, pled rather not guilty to the allegations. The UK Metropolitan Police in June had accused the lawmaker of conspiring to bring a child to the United Kingdom for organ harvesting, saying the victim was a 15-year-old boy. Meanwhile, a Westminster Magistrates Court has yesterday Thursday ruled that David Wamini Ukbo, the alleged kidney donor for the daughter of Senator Ike Kwermadu, is not 15 years old. The case is now being adjourned till 4th of August. Now moving on from that conversation, from infancy, a child is taught how to read and write. After reaching a certain age, that child begins to attend the school for mental development, amongst other things. However, along the line, some children find it difficult to comprehend, read, or express themselves fluently. According to statistics by Africa Dyslexia Organization, one in five persons is likely to have dyslexia, which means that they have a specific learning disability that is neurobiological in origin and characterized by difficulties with accurate and or fluent word recognition and by poor spelling and decoding abilities. Sadly, many have not been able to identify pupils who are dyslexic. In Africa, it is often associated with a taboo or negative belief of uh, some sort. Now, joining us this morning is a seasoned educationist with over 30 years of experience in education delivery, research, administration and management. She is certified in dys dyslexia assessment support and intervention and holds a certificate of competence in educational testing a diploma in dyslexia support and a certificate in assessment and assess management from the Middlesex University in the UK. We'll say good morning and welcome to the show, the Managing Director of Dyslexia Nigeria, Dr. Adrian Tikolo. Good morning, thanks for joining us. Good morning, thank you for having me. Very interesting uh, CV you have there. <laughs> uh, <laughs> please quickly shed more light on the current perception of dyslexia in Africa and Nigeria as a case study. Well, thank you. Um, dyslexia has been discovered for over 100 years. But despite that, the Africa and Nigeria are still largely in the dark. The level of awareness is near zero, near zero. Uh, nobody seems to know what dyslexia is. When you probe people a little further, they would just tell you, oh, for those that seem to know at all, they just know the word. Or they just say, would it be those people that, you know, reverse their B's and D's? Usually they can't identify the signs of dyslexia. And there's certainly no method they have to support dyslexics. In fact, this is even worse with educators and heads of schools. They right. usually have a way of labeling children as lazy or, you know, dumb because they can't identify the signs of dyslexia. I mean, I, I, talking about dyslexia, I remember I was once a teacher and I find that there were students or pupils at the time that I found it very difficult to get information across to. And at the time, I had no idea what dyslexia was, even as a teacher. Now, let's talk about teachers and the sensitization. How do we educate them about dyslexia, managing a child that is dyslexic? The thing is, the knowledge of dyslexia, like I said, has been known for a long time. The strategies has been documented for more than 20 years still it hasn't found a way into the curriculum of pre you know teacher training so we need to ensure that teachers are trained about dyslexia and other special needs before they even get out of school before they go into the classrooms we need pre you know pre qualification trainings for teachers we need to insert it in their curriculum and teacher training colleges beyond that we need continuous training of teachers in schools, in service, when they are already in schools, we need a mandate to ensure that, you know, there's continuous professional development of teachers. That's the only way we're going to get teachers to do what the need food for children that, you know, that have dyslexia and other needs in schools. All right. Uh, let's also talk about parents. And um, um, you know, of course, in Nigeria, across Africa, uh, a lot of parents come down hard on their kids, uh, not understanding that there might be something, um, a medical, you know, reason why they're not as fast as others or something. 
Um, they also call it a taboo that ex exists, you know, in certain homes. How has your organization been able to help in this regard? Absolutely. It's always painful to find that parents who should be the first line of support and, you know, have advocated for the children don't know anything about dyslexia. So we do have a lot of, you know, workshops and trainings for parents. We visit schools during school events and speak to parents when they're there about the science of dyslexia, especially at times like this when you have graduation ceremonies and prize giving ceremonies and some children have not done as well as expected. This is the time we usually visit schools to talk to parents, you know, about dyslexia. We also have a lot of pamphlets, you know, and flyers that we distribute. We go to churches for free talks. We educate parents as well as teachers because once parents know, they are usually the first line of seeing the signs when the children are still really young. So at what point should uh, parents start checking that their children might be potentially dyslexic? And what should individuals in general know about dyslexia? Well, it's good to know that dyslexia is a reading difficulty, the difficulty with language and all. So it's reading, writing and spelling difficulty, but it also can come with difficulty with concentration and attention. Dyslexia does not affect intelligence, so they usually have average to high intelligence, they're quite intelligent. It is not as a result of poor teaching or socioeconomic status. You know, so dyslexia is common. One in five persons has dyslexia. So you will find it in every classroom. Parents should know the signs as well as teachers. Now, if you, if you think your child is showing any signs, like he's not reading early, he's not associating letters with sounds, his handwriting is poor, he's quite intelligent, you think he's creative, you know, he speaks really well, maybe he was late speaking though, then you want to begin to look for how to get him assessed for dyslexia. And you can diagnose dyslexia anywhere from four years old. So really once you begin to see the signs, you need to go for an assessment. Well, there, there is a lot of popular people living with dyslexia, you know, uh, such as Steven Spielberg, uh, the late Muhammad Ali, uh, Richard Branson also, who of course is doing uh, amazingly well, and all these persons. Um, are we sensitizing enough or does more need to be done uh, with regards to conversation on dyslexia? Oh, with the level of awareness, we're not doing enough at all. And like you said, so many popular people have dyslexia. I mean, dyslexia has huge strengths that it comes with. It gives people a lot of huge strengths as well. And so, I mean, I would expect that you know, our popular people, our celebrities, you know, actors, those people should come out and say, speak a little more about dyslexia. Once we raise awareness through them, a lot more people would listen. So, you know, people can sing about dyslexia, act about dyslexia, speak about dyslexia, use their platforms to talk about dyslexia. We're not doing half enough yet. All right. There's still more that needs to be come. We need to keep sensitizing more people. If I recall correctly, I think Ike Osakedua, who is a popular host, has mentioned, you know, having had to deal with dyslexia as well. And it doesn't That's stop them from living amazing lives. We must continually do that. Thank you very much, Dr. Adrian, for the work you're doing and for joining us this morning. Thank you so much. And thank you for having me.